Hey everybody, welcome back to the After Hours channel. So in today's video, we'll give you a tour of our new to us motorhome. So if you've been watching this channel, we just purchased a bumper pull camper about a year ago. I think we got it last July. So maybe you're wondering, if you just purchased a new camper, why did you purchase a used motorhome? So the bumper pull camper, it was nice. We were really wanting something that we could take more places and we wanted to be able to take it with the Suburban. We have three kids. My truck is almost 20 years old and it's usually loaded down with tools and farm equipment. So we wanted something that we could, you know, take the kids and spread them out a little bit. The Suburban's very comfortable for fam for long travels. But like the second trip we were out in that thing, we were camping with some friends and they pulled in with their little motorhome pulling their side by side. And I was like, man, we messed up. It's like, that would be awesome. So we had been kind of kicking it over. We were kind of thinking before we even bought the bumper pull that eventually we would buy a little motorhome and, um, you know, go out West, go on some long trips. So, with COVID going on right now, the used camper market is extremely hot, especially bumper pull bunkhouse campers, which is what we had. So we sold it for very close to what we paid for it, like, like within a couple thousand dollars of what we paid for it. And we figured that was the only time that was going to happen. And if we wanted to do it, let's do it now. And that's, that's how we ended up with this. So yep, here it is. So this is a 2018 FR3. That's the name of the, it's a Forest River. FR3 is the model. And then 32 DS is the floor plan or trim. So this is a bunkhouse, 34 feet overall length motorhome. Fair we'd uh, show you guys around it. So it is a class A motorhome uh, with a V10 gas engine. It is two slide outs. I think it's 80 gallons of gas, 50 gallons of fresh water, and 40 of black and 40 of gray water. All those compartments are right in there. Uh, and then gas tanks down here. Got several storage compartments, like there's a storage compartment. There's a couple more down there. Big pass through storage over here. Uh, that pass through comes out to this little compartment. Don't really like that, but uh, storage again and storage again. So here's where the kids' toys and everything are. Now, one thing that I forgot to mention, I just noticed when I was editing it, this is the only FR3 I've ever seen that doesn't have an outdoor TV. I didn't notice that till we got it home. I don't really care, or we probably would have never watched it anyways, but just something that this is different. I've never seen this on a different FR3. It's not perfect. I mean, it does have a couple dings on it. Like, there's a ding. There's a scratch here. There's a pretty good scratch there. The previous owner, he claims a rock hit that. I don't believe him. A rock did not hit that. And whenever I was under it looking around, after I got it home, I noticed that the fuel skid pan is pretty much caved. He went over a curb, I would imagine. I mean, a rock definitely didn't do this. I don't know if you can see, but like that jack stand is pretty well bent. And there's the fuel skid pan right there. And up there. Probably might not be able to tell. That might be a skid pan. That might just be the fuel tank. No, it's in a metal pan. It doesn't seem to affect the camper any at all, but just goes to show you, you really need to look over campers whenever you're buying them. It does have a fiberglass roof. I did, that was one of the main things I was looking at was the roof. Uh, I don't want a camper that leaks fiberglass roof. Uh, it was a big plus. As long as we keep up the two seals, the seal there and the seal on the other end, that's, that roof should last us a long time. Not painted, like this is just a decal, which doesn't really matter to me. And this is just a like a cream colored fiberglass dye. Say, I think it looks fine, doesn't really bother me that much. So we do have plenty of storage, a lot more storage than our old bumper pull camper. The main thing that I miss about our bumper camper was I had a outdoor kitchen right here slash mini bars, kind of what I used it as. Really like that. When we were at the campsite, it was really easy to, you know, grab a beer out of the fridge right there. I'm going to miss that a lot, but I'll just have to bring a cooler. Now, walking into the camper, it does have a nice big door. Um, I'd heard people say that. I didn't really understand how nice that was uh, until we got it. So this is an entry level Class A, and I think for an entry level, it's, uh, it's pretty nice. One thing to keep in mind with any camper, they're made cheap. So, like, I mean, you can about push your hand through the wall. 
you gotta be careful with the cabinets. I mean, they are wood cabinets, but they're not great cabinets at all. I mean, you could easily break one. And then, uh, I mean, like the trim's cheap. On the way home, this trim piece fell fell off. It's actually laying right there. Not uncommon, they just use finishing nails. Well, um, campers shake a lot going down the road, especially RVs, so those finishing nails will eventually work themselves loose. I'll probably fix it eventually, I just haven't done it yet. Um, let's just start at the front of the camper and work our way back. So this is a Ford. We will cover that up with a bow tie at some point. But anyways, these are the cup holders it came with. A 32 ounce Yeti tumbler will not fit in there or any other kind of coffee cup, so I bought these aftermarket. I mean, they just slide in there and twist, box them in there, and then you can put a bigger cup there. It has this nice little table, same thing, little tiny cup holders, so I put one of these in there too. If you follow me on the farm channel, you know I drink a lot of coffee, and I've got a mobile house with a coffee pot in it, so I was definitely wanting to have some way of, you know, putting my coffee in a cup holder. Um, but overall, uh, the cab extremely comfy i have plenty of leg room i'm uh, six foot four i'm not a small person and yeah i fit in it great um, one thing i purchased was this little magnetic dash mount put a little magnet right there works awesome for navigation i had read a lot of reviews that said these motorhomes it pretty much all these gas motorhomes on the ford chassis they sway a lot they're hard to drive i mean a lot of people were saying they're white knuckling the whole time like almost unbearable so I was really worried whenever I went to pick this thing up I bought this 370 miles from the house so first trip I took was 370 miles through a thunderstorm and I was pretty nervous um, not bad at all I'm used to driving semis tractors uh, large equipment and this wasn't a whole lot different than driving a loaded dump truck I didn't think but at the same time having that there for navigation was good I mean not terrible but i also want to you know not be having to hold my phone out here to look at navigation and stuff has a pioneer radio with a backup camera has side view cameras this one doesn't work i have the replacement uh it came with the camper i don't know if i'm gonna put it in it looks like a job and those side view cameras really aren't that important in my opinion like yeah they turn on but you can't really see a whole lot in my opinion like i mean it's cooler there but i'm not super worried about them kayla's seat over here nice big seat these seats do rotate around so when we get to the campsite we've rotated them around and this is where i eat dinner uh, the kids they all eat there and then me and kayla have these seats to sit in this little table works out pretty well she's got this little desk that folds out it's pretty flimsy like if you put a laptop on that and tried to work going down the road it's probably not going to work like this whole dash is flimsy i mean it shakes a little bit going down the road too like these things aren't super quiet going down the road the motor is right there and it's noisy especially when you're going up a mountain you're giving it all the bunnies and it's loud these windows vibrate a little bit um it's just it's not quiet in here let's see if i got a clip of us driving and we'll put that in here now But I did do a couple modifications. Whenever we bought this thing, or whenever we made up our mind we were gonna buy a camper, I did a lot of research, and a lot of people were saying you can put um, like sound deadening material in that doghouse cover. That's what's covering the engine, that fiberglass cover right there. I put that in there, it did help a little bit. Under the floorboard of the driver and passenger seat, it's just plywood, and then the frame, or some kind of coating in the frame. So I put some sound deadening there. That helped a little bit with heat, but it's still not quiet. One thing that was extremely loud going down the road was this screen door. It was just vibrating to beat, to beat off. I mean, it was just very loud. Shook a lot going down the road like that, but times like a thousand. So one thing I did, I put these like, I don't know, basically they're things you'd put on the um, like bottom of furniture. Uh, like, I don't know what they're even called, but, um, but yeah, they work great. I put those every few feet. And then I put a bead of silicone in this tray on the bottom because it's just sitting in there. And then I also put some of those pieces on the back side here and there. And then that really made this tight. Uh, in fact, you gotta make sure you slam it to get it to latch, but this door is completely quiet going down the road now. I did that before our first big trip, but we did, like whenever I was driving home, I heard that door the whole time and it got annoying. So moving up here, there is a bed right here. In fact, we'll just go ahead and drop it down. The kids love that bed too. Like they fight over who gets to sleep up there. So 
So, yeah, I mean, this is like the size of a queen bed, I think they claim. Maybe just a double, I don't know. But either way, it's a nice space for them to sleep. Ladder clips in here. Um, that's one of the main reasons why we wanted to gas her. Not a lot of diesel pushers have this feature because the exit door is usually right there on a diesel pusher. And we needed a bunk bed. And then we also wanted this. Uh, I mean, the couch and dinette make beds, but um, we really wanted all the kids to have their own bed. So, like that feature quite a bit. Like I say, this couch makes a bed. I wouldn't want to sleep on it. In my experience, fold beds suck, especially when you get older and you're bigger. The kids don't care, they'd sleep on it just fine, but it does have a little leg rest, but it doesn't recline. This is pretty much it. TV's up there, it's kind of in an awkward place for sitting on the couch, but usually the kids sit on those booths, and like I said, we rotate those chairs around and it works fine. And we don't watch a whole lot of TV. When we're camping, we're outside. Uh, the booth, it is fairly nice, you got a backrest back there. Uh, and there's seat belts in the booth. Olivia's car seat sits right there. She just sits there and has a good old time. Looks out the window. Watches movies on the iPad. Has a great time. Standard stove, microwave. The kitchen storage, I didn't even think about this. But there's less storage inside of this camper than our bumper pull. I, like I said, I didn't even think about that. But Kayla started packing all of our stuff into here. And we took a whole tote of crap out of here that we didn't have room for. Or, you know, stuff that was doubled up. But... That's one thing she doesn't like about it is it's got less storage space. I mean, there is there's a good amount of storage and we're, we're not packed all the way. We've only went on one trip so far in the camper. I'm sure by the end of the season, we'll have everything tucked away in nice, neat spots. But the other campers seem to have more storage in the kitchen and living area. TV, you do have space behind TV. Spider, spider, get out of here. Let's go ahead and yeah, he's gone. You have storage back here. I think it's kind of awkward, but I guess it's good that it's there. Um, decent sized sink. This folds up. Plenty of counter stops, countertop space, especially when you fold that up. Just got to watch someone doesn't knock it off driving or walking through there. Fridge is nice. Nice big fridge. We like the fridge. It does seem like it's. you guys got to make sure you get it closed. But yeah, fridge is nice. We've never had a double doored fridge in a camper, so nice improvement. Kids bunk space, um, like I said, we got back from our camping trip like last week and we're going on another one next weekend. So everything's just kind of thrown in here, but here's their two bunks. This one does like fold up, flip up, but the lock that holds it up is broke. There's a couch down here that folds into a bed. That's where Olivia sleeps. It's, she doesn't have far to roll off if she does roll off. But one thing we like about this, there's seat belts there. There's a TV here. So if we need to separate the kids, one of them or two of them can come back here. The rest of them can stay up there. They can have their own space. They can watch their own movie. Yada, yada, yada. There's a door. That, got a bike rack right there. But door closes off. Gives everybody a little bit of privacy. And then we have a king bed. That's a pretty nice feature. So all of our sheets are just kind of thin on here right now. But do have a king bed. That's pretty nice. The rear exit window, um, some people like the rear window, some people don't, I don't care. Uh, I think we have plenty of closet storage space, but one thing to keep in mind, these bunks don't have any storage space. Here's that bunk, so. In our old camper, we basically had storage just like this. Except there was a closet here, there's not one there, which was plenty for us in our room. But the kids also had that much storage space, so basically all the clothes for everybody in the camper is getting stored back here. Um, seemed to work okay. If we were going on a really long trip, like for a few weeks, might get a little tight. Definitely be visiting some laundry mats. Kind of cool, there's a storage space under the TV, flip up um, cabinet. We just got some movies, a movie projector and stuff like that in there, but kind of neat. Yeah, it's kind of a, does have dual ACs. That's also a very nice feature. We can keep it cool back here. I don't have that one on, but it does a pretty good job. Now the bathroom. This bathroom doesn't look big, but once again, just go ahead and sit down. Don't worry, I'm not taking a dump, but I mean, I'm a big guy and I have plenty of room. We can close the door. Still have enough room to take a dump. That was one of my main complaints with the old camper was the bathroom. It was tiny. And I knew it was tiny when we bought it, but I was like, we're camping, we're roughing it. I mean, we're 
roughing it, not that big of a deal. I mean, I like to tent camp. I've taken a dump in the woods, not the end of the world. Well, guess what? The first time I had to take a dump in the middle of the night and I went to a shower house for about a quarter mile down the road, I didn't like it. So definitely wanted a camper that we were going to keep to have a bigger bathroom. This one fits the bill. Not huge, but it works. That shower is actually way bigger than it looks. Um, I can take a shower in there and be comfortable. So if you're looking at an FR3 and you want to know about the bathroom size, I'm six foot four, like I say, and I'm not skinny and I fit just fine. I'm sure for some people it'd be too small, but it works good for us. I mean, can you even give a camper tour without a crapper review? I mean, you gotta have that. But yeah, that's pretty much your camper, guys. Um, I know whenever we were buying this, every time I would search FR3 camper reviews, only thing I got was dealer reviews. And I've never seen a dealer that's like, this camper sucks, or don't look at, don't buy this, because it has this going on. So I wanted to do one that was a little bit more unbiased, and I'm not trying to sell the camper. I bought the camper. If this thing sucks, I'm gonna let you know. Um, other than that, I'm trying to think of what our negatives were. Oh, the outside. See, we're outside a lot when we're camping. The awning is not big at all. The awning is only 12 foot wide. I dislike that a lot. It's my main negative. In fact, we almost bought a different style camper or different camper with a bunkhouse because of that. We're outside most of the time. Now around here in Southern Ohio and most of Appalachia, Anywhere you go camping, you're usually going to have shade trees. Well, first camping trip we were at, no shade trees, and I, I kind of missed the big awning. So, that sucks. Uh, it does have the LED light strip. It also has a generator. So, this is the first camper we've had with an onboard generator, which you, you actually need. Because when you're driving down the road, it gets hot. When you're driving, I mean, the engine does not power these, co these coach ACs. It just powers the air conditioner vents up front just like a regular car well it gets hot it's hot back here so you run the you run the generator so you can run that so that's what we did and it kept it pretty good our first trip out it was uh it was hot i mean it was oh in dc it was like 90 degrees very humid and um as long as we had the coach acs running we weren't that bad now on the way home for whatever reason we couldn't get our coach ac to work um we couldn't get our coach ac to work for like the last 300 miles we stopped for lunch and then it, it quit working. I don't know why. I got home, when I plugged it in, it was working, it was like perfect. So I was really worried we were going to have to replace an air conditioner. Well, a few hours later, Kayla came in to get some laundry. That AC was just pouring water inside. It's like wonderful. So I did some research and found out that's a pretty common problem. The drip pans will plug up on these, uh, these motorhome air conditioners up top they'll quit dripping out the at the top and then just start flowing back inside so i looked up a quick video on how to clean that out on youtube basically they said just to take a garden hose and squirt that drip pan it would blast all that material out i did that and it must have worked that was the quick and easy way to fix it and the air, air conditioner's been running for two days now without any problem i hope that fixes it because air conditioners are like two three grand don't want to do that but yeah that's pretty much our main complaints like i say it's a little noisy they do sway a little bit going down the road. But yeah, other than that, it, it, we, I like it. Um, the gas mileage just sucks. I mean, it, it gets, um, we pulled the Roxor on a trailer. We got 5.8 miles to the gallon. Now that was through mountains. There's a lot of ups and downs, not really a lot of riding on ridges. But yeah, the, the fuel economy was not the greatest. I think if we're flat towing a vehicle, I think we'll get better. From what I see, a lot of people get six to seven. Now Grant, I was running 70 to 75 miles an hour when I could. Now going up the grades about 50 miles an hour was about what I would crest real steep ones at. So I'm sure some of that was me driving fast, but um, yeah, that's kind of what our experience was. So it could get better fuel mileage, that would be a plus, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Now we do have a trip video coming up of our first trip. We actually went to Washington DC. We stayed at a pretty cool campground called Cherry Hill. Um, if you're going to Washington, D.C. and you want to take a camper, that's a great campground. So if you want to see that video, that'll be coming out on this channel sometime this month. But yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to thumbs up the video, and we'll see you in the next one.